morning, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz and here is your detailed forecast update for the 4th of November 2024. We're going to be talking about severe thunderstorms and their potential to fire up across the northeast of New South Wales and into the southeast of Queensland from tonight. We'll continue to update you on the tropical weather scene and also on that heatwave that's still creeping across central parts of Australia. And we've also got a bit of a rainfall event expected to develop across the northeast of New South Wales towards the start of next fortnight. So all of that plus more coming up in today's weather forecast. If you are brand new to the channel, please consider subscribing the support lately has been much appreciated and I thank you for doing so in advance but let's head into the northeast of New South Wales and over to the southeast of Queensland where we do have some potentially severe thunderstorms expected to fire up from tonight into tomorrow afternoon as well so let's talk about them right now on the forecast you can see from today from this afternoon actually we're already going to start to see some uh, thunderstorms fire up around the Tamworth and Armadale area into the northeast of the New South Wales area into the Northern Rivers section. We'll also see some thunderstorms along the coastline up towards uh, Cofton, uh, Cofton and Grafts Harbour. Uh, Grafton and Coffs Harbour, rather. It's a Monday morning, too early for this stuff. Uh, you can see that these thunderstorms here are going to be strong at times. A couple of storms also expected to extend later on in the afternoon up to the Queensland and New South Wales border, up towards Lismore and then Warwick on the Queensland side of things. Storms are unlikely to make themselves deep into Queensland, though. They should stop at about the line of Warwick, definitely not making themselves up into the Gold Coast and you can write off a chance of showers or storms this afternoon in Brisbane. It's just not going to happen. Uh, but showers and storms will still be pretty persistent here and there across the northeastern parts of the New South Wales area. Now, we're not expecting anything severe tonight. The main risk is for isolated pockets of heavy rainfall, but we're really not expecting any severe thunderstorms to fire up. That being said, it is early November peak storm season. I would not be surprised if severe thunderstorm warnings were issued for some of these locations. But again, it is really unlikely at this time. So uh, it's going to be a pretty tame night. That's just all there is to it. And this is just because the convective available potential energy value they are high, but the conditions for these thunderstorms just aren't there. You can see offshore there are some good values for thunderstorms to make the most of. There's going to be a lot of energy in the air as well along the Queensland and New South Wales border. But in terms of the temperature forecast and also the mid-level humidity values, it's just not going to be high enough for some of these thunderstorms to take uh, control of their atmosphere. Like I said, the values around Lismore, uh, Grafton and Coffs Harbour do look pretty good. But as you get further north up to the Queensland and New South Wales border, the humidity values themselves and the temperature forecast is also pretty miserable at this time, which means thunderstorms are going to struggle to really take control of the atmosphere. That's a very detailed forecast for not much that's really expected tonight. In terms of other storm events happening around New South Wales, a couple of showers and storms are possible outside of Newcastle and the Barrington Tops, and a few showers also expected in the Sydney area, which could have an embedded thunderstorm or two in them. But again, nothing serious and nothing crazy, nothing really worth talking about down there. It is the northeast of New South Wales where the most interesting action will be tonight. Around the nation, in fact, it's going to be a pretty boring day weather-wise around Australia bar some warm weather in the interior. So let's move it forward to tomorrow where we do have a more interesting weather setup for us and that's going to be powered by a surface low pressure system and a trough extending across the northeast of New South Wales and into the southeast and south central parts of Queensland and then from around midday local time from the late morning and into the early afternoon hours. In fact, we're expecting showers and storms to begin to fire up in the northeast of New South Wales, again outside of Grafton and Lismore. Uh, these storms here will right out of the bat start to get quite strong, especially outside of Lismore and the closer you get to the Queensland border. These storms will start off quite strong and do have the potential to go severe thunderstorm or warned by around 3 or 4 p.m. local time before crossing the border into Queensland and then rapidly developing there as well. Conditions are going to be very favourable for these storms. There's a lot of heat expected tomorrow as well with temperatures up into the early 30s for much of the southeast of the state and into the mid 30s the further inland you get out towards Chinchilla and Roma so thunderstorms out there if they can get themselves going they will have a field day out there there'll be a lot of instability in the atmosphere for them uh, these thunderstorms here will also have high humidity values, which means from the uh, get-go, once they do start blowing up, especially when they are just getting themselves organised, they will have a lot of fuel to really intensify quite quickly. Now, the Eastern Blue once again, isn't playing this round of thunderstorms up too hard. They're calling for the odd severe thunderstorm here and there, and I'd be surprised if we didn't get severe thunderstorm warnings, especially along the uh, hills outside of Brisbane, and then out towards Toowoomba, Warwick, and Stanthorpe, and then further up uh, towards Kingaroy and Gympie. I'd be surprised if we didn't get severe thunderstorm warnings there by tomorrow afternoon. The Axis G3 really taking some of these storms to town here. You can see an intense patch of uh, precipitation expected 
just north of the Queensland New South Wales border to materialise by around 6 or 7 pm local time. And this here is just uh, indicative of severe thunderstorms. If the Axis G3 forecast does come into fruition, we will have quite a, a, a concentrated but quite a powerful outbreak of severe thunderstorms just in this little pocket of Queensland. Now, in terms of risks for the Gold Coast and Brisbane, pretty minimal at this time. A couple of storms possible into the uh, western suburbs of Brisbane. But in terms of direct impacts from significant thunderstorms for Brisbane and the Gold Coast, looks pretty minimal at this time. So if you do live in Brisbane or Logan City or the Gold Coast or even up in the Sunshine Coast as well, the chance of significant thunderstorms today and tomorrow, very minimal at this time. In fact, basically zero, especially if you live on the Sunshine Coast. But further inland out towards Boona, Warwick, uh, Clifton, Toowoomba, and then further north up towards uh, Dolby and Crow's Nest, a couple of severe thunderstorms certainly do look possible, most likely on Tuesday. Uh, for those locations. And again, what's driving this? It is the convective available potential energy. There's a lot of instability in the atmosphere, and we've been talking about this for the last couple of days. Some pretty high values across this part of Queensland, albeit they have dropped a little bit from yesterday. So I reckon this little outbreak here might be on a bit of a weakening trend at this time. I don't think it's going to be as severe. This is certainly on the upper end of the forecast, uh, what we've been talking about in this video. This is certainly kind of the extreme end at this time. Uh, but in terms of conditions, it does look pretty good pretty solid for some severe thunderstorms to fire up so certainly something that we're going to be watching i'd recommend keeping a close eye on the radar tomorrow afternoon main risks at this time do look to be heavy rainfall and damaging winds medium to large sized hailstones also look possible but in terms of really nasty supercell severe thunderstorms i don't think it's too much of a risk at this time and in terms of disastrous impacts from very dangerous thunderstorms again i don't think it's too much of a risk certainly nothing worth worrying about at this time it's a stock standard severe thunderstorm outbreak for this time of the year for the southeast of Queensland. Queensland. Certainly something worth mentioning in terms of uh, presenting the weather news, especially for the southeast of Queensland, uh, but certainly nothing worth worrying about at this time. So make sure you do stay safe in this weather event here, but again, do not panic at all from thunderstorms like this. Certainly no risk uh, or not much of a risk at all. Now, another thing that I would like to talk about, and this isn't so much thunderstorms. In fact, just keeping it on those thunderstorms, you can see we're expecting a couple of quieter days, at least for Queensland. New South Wales will have a couple of stormy days here and there before those storms pipe up again on Friday. We will have to have a look at them again on Friday afternoon. But just before we take a look at those thunderstorms again in a future forecast update, you can see on Monday a complex low pressure system uh, a trough and just a, a massive area of instability powered by this little high pressure ridge here across south central parts of Queensland. Uh, this does create a way for some pretty interesting weather that we're going to be having a look uh, at on Monday the 11th of November. So just take a look at this here you can see a bit of a rainfall event expected to unfold Monday night into early Tuesday morning across parts of the southeast of Queensland and into the northeast of New South Wales and I'm going to break that down for you in greater detail right now. Now with this surface low pressure system a trough and a bit of an onshore flow expected along the southeastern Queensland and the northeastern New South Wales coastline in terms of winds driving ashore quite a lot of moisture. We'll see a bit of a storm outbreak, definitely no, nothing severe in terms of thunderstorms, but for the most part some moderate to heavy rainfall expected to take hold uh, of the weather scene for a couple of hours by uh, Monday evening and into early Tuesday morning. We could be seeing rainfall uh, into Tuesday afternoon, about 12 to 16 hours of just steady rainfall, which will pile on some rainfall accumulations across some parts of the um, New South Wales and Queensland and by Tuesday afternoon once those thunderstorms do begin to weaken down we'll have some pretty high rainfall accumulations to talk about so let's break those down for you right now. Over a 48 hour period between Monday morning and Tuesday evening we're expecting peak rainfall accumulations in the southeast of Queensland to approach 100 millimetres over this 48 hour period. Now again this is nothing uh, really crazy for this time of the year in fact this type of rainfall can fall in an hour at this time of the year across the southeast of Queensland but again this is certainly something that I feel is worth mentioning mentioning 100 millimetres from this uh, different type of rainfall event than what we have been seeing over the last couple of weeks. Uh, certainly something worth talking about and certainly something that few people will be interested in as well. So just a heads up, next Monday and Tuesday we are going to be talking about a couple of days of heavier rainfall across the southeast of Queensland and into the northeast of New South Wales. And again into the northeast of New South Wales, rainfall accumulations up to 100 millimetres over just uh, that 48 hour period and taking that forward a little bit further into Wednesday with the addition of some thunderstorms through uh, Sunday and then into Wednesday you can see peak rainfall accumulations expected to approach 150 millimetres so certainly some pretty heavy falls are possible across this part of Queensland and New South Wales into the uh, later parts of next weekend and into early next fortnight certainly something worth talking about that's for sure. 
And then just generally speaking across Queensland, the rainfall extending into central parts of the state and then across into the southwest as well. But again, that will be talk for another forecast update. We'll touch on this once these thunderstorms for today and tomorrow uh, do peter out. Wednesday morning, I'll have a detailed forecast update again on thunderstorms expected for later next uh, this coming week and next weekend. And I'll also talk about the weather event expected to unfold on Monday and Tuesday, the 11th and 12th of November then. But for now, we'll just leave this part of Queensland behind and we'll go and talk about about other things around Australia and what I would like to talk about now is that tropical weather scene now again nothing has really changed from yesterday but we will still just update you on what rainfall we're expecting over the next 10 days there's no really standout locations across the tropics of Australia a couple of spots actually in interior parts of the Northern Territory South Australia and into WA as well with a thunderstorm event expected to develop uh, this weekend and that's actually what's going to bring the rainfall to eastern parts of the nation this thunderstorm event on Saturday and Sunday could bring rainfall accumulation up to 50 millimetres across interior parts of the nation, especially around the Ayers Rock and Alice Springs area. We could be seeing rainfall accumulations between 30 and 60 millimetres over the weekend. So some good falls out there. It's expected for this time of the year, but again, some pretty good and very much welcome rainfall, I would imagine. Also some good falls expected up into the Kimberley region of WA, up towards 100 millimetres expected over the next 10 days. Stock standard stuff for this time of the year. And some rainfall also possible up into the Cape York Peninsula, but again, not much of it. And as you can see on the drought monitoring map, up here they're really starting to get quite dry with mild drought like conditions now extending across parts of far north Queensland and they are only going to increase over the coming couple of days you can see soil moisture values now they're substantially below average outside of the Daintree and the Cassowary coast for some locations in the Atherton tablelands unfortunately soil moisture values are now really starting to head into those drought uh, like values which is why they're still on those water restrictions up there not unusual for this time of the year it does happen every other year that we do see a bit of a dry phase before the real start of the wet season but again it is still a little bit concerning and they do desperately need a little bit of rainfall up there but I won't speak too soon because, well, knowing our luck last year, we'll get this nice dry weather, this fine sunny weather up in the far north of Queensland, and then 2,000 millimetres will fall from Cyclone Jasper. I mean, that's what happened last year. We won't see that again this year, fingers crossed, but again, we don't want to jinx it at all in the weather world. Uh, so taking a look around Australia, however, there's no other standout locations in terms of dry uh, soil moisture values apart from into the south central parts of Queensland and into the northern parts of the Northern Territory. That Again, they do need some rain flour there but for the most part the wet season especially over in the west is chugging along nicely with some good falls now being reported over into the Kimberley region of WA. That's a lot of talk on the drought situation again uh, nothing too crazy happening, nothing out of the ordinary. Now let's take a look for tropical cyclones. Spoiler alert, nothing is happening again uh, on the weather radar here, but we do have a little bit of uh, enhanced convective activity just offshore from Indonesia. Now yesterday you might remember me saying that this is exactly where I want to see enhanced convection for tropical cyclone genesis in the Australian area, uh, in the Australian basin. And this is just north of the Cocos Keeling Islands and just towards the northwest of Christmas Island. So again, exactly where I want to be seeing it and I would not be surprised if this tried to spin up into a tropical low sometime around the 15th or the 16th. Certainly something that I'm going to be watching quite closely over the coming couple of days, but I imagine you guys are going to get pretty sick of me talking about this. I'm very excited for some tropical cyclone activity. Over in the east, however, for those excited for tropical cyclone activity, nothing on the forecast yet, and I doubt there'll be anything on the forecast for a good couple of weeks, maybe a couple of months, uh, maybe a couple of, uh, maybe into next month rather, uh, at this current time. We're not really talking about anything right now. And just to finish off this video, I would like to talk about the heat wave that's still extending across interior parts of the nation. Of course, this time of the year, we're going to have to stop talking about sort of 44 degree days because it is becoming much more stock standard. But again, it is quite warm across interior parts of Australia, especially into parts of WA and into the parts of Queensland and the Northern Territory that are currently being impacted by this little surface trough extending across from Tennant Creek down to about Birdsville in Queensland. That's bringing temperatures up towards 40 to 44 degrees over the next couple of days. Very warm indeed and that's going to be providing the ample fuel required for these thunderstorms to develop across interior parts of Queensland and into the southeast as well a lot of energy in the current atmosphere and a lot of instability just being provided from this heat because it is quite warm indeed temperatures also into Western Australia starting to get very warm as well typical for this time of the year but you can see daytime maxima across Western Australia by this weekend expected to 
uh, jump up to about 43, 44, uh, a couple of degrees above average. We're still not seeing those super warm days yet where we're talking about 45 or 46. We had a couple of them last week, but again, the temperatures, they're just refusing to rise at this time. And spoiler alert, by next fortnight as well, we could be seeing some warm temperatures extending into the coastal parts of New South Wales and into the coastal parts of Victoria as well. The temperatures expected into the mid to high 20s for the first time this summer, and then high to uh, early 30s for parts of uh, coastal New South Wales as well by next Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. So we'll wait and see how this forecast play, uh, plays out. But it looks like some warm temperatures do look possible down there, which would be fantastic to see because I know a lot of people in Victoria and New South Wales are now hanging on for their summer. But yeah, that basically does it for the Australian weather forecast today. If you have enjoyed the video, then make sure to leave a like and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If I've left any questions unanswered or if you've got any comments, then please do leave them in the comment section down below. Uh, that is all for me today. A special shout out to the channel sponsors their names are on screen right now and I could not run this show without them so again their support is much appreciated and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.